So the bill's dealing with the grand bargain, and uh, we did not call the bills because Senator Rodonio told me uh, after we negotiated all, all day over some more uh, items that uh, if we were to call the bills that there would be very little, if any, Republican support other than herself. And uh, this was always designed to be a bipartisan effort. Many of these tough bills, as you could see from the ones that we've already voted on, require support from both parties. So uh, that's as, as a result. Uh, there's no sense in calling the bills and having them be defeated, especially since it's uh, my intention to hopefully continue uh, to pass this grand bargain. It's essential to the governor's budget. The governor himself even said grand bargain in his budget documents. He, he, I think he said that uh, his budget was short about four and a half billion dollars. We later found out it was short about six and a half billion dollars. So I, I assume that the next move is the governor's to uh, tell us uh, why these Republican senators were voting no on on bills that he uh, supported. Yesterday we had a pension bill that I can tell you we took language directly from his his um, staff. I had personally negotiated that pension bill with him earlier and he insisted that I go out and call the bill. And I told him it's complicated passing bills. And he's, he's proved that because his own party didn't support the bill <laughs> that he wanted me to call. So we are open for business here. We have um, half these, I think half the bills have passed. We are ready to, whenever we have the support of enough senators who are Republican, uh, we did a very good job in getting support from a good number of the Democrats willing to vote on these tough, tough issues. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing this. Nothing's gotten any better. Uh, it's March. Uh, we do not have authority to spend money for higher education. That ended January 1st, remember? We do not have authority for some human services from, from government operations. The uh, figure that Senator Rodonio had used of $11 million a day, if that was accurate, that's, that's still happening. <coughs> so, uh, and, and the, the effort to um, raise taxes starting January 1st become more difficult the further you get into the year. So, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. What exactly does the governor do? I don't, um, I, I would suggest that what you should do is ask the Senate Republicans individually what the governor did. I haven't talked to the governor. I've talked to Republican senators who said they went and saw the governor today, so you should ask them what he told them. Well, that didn't work before. That's why we started this. Um, again, my attitude is <laughs> I was ready to call these bills today. I had sufficient number of votes from the Democratic caucus to pass them all, assuming we had a similar percentage of votes from the Republicans. So it's, um, it's not my move. I, I think it's really uh, assuming that what happened here is that the governor pulled votes off. We should find out why the governor did that. Uh, apparently he wants to change the, the, the items that were negotiated, but that's what he's been, has failed to do for two years. This was a good exercise because you s can go look at the bills. There's things there that Democrats don't want to vote for, unions are against it, trial lawyers are against it, uh, but we still were willing to, to, to put votes on the board. Uh, the things that the governor asked for, uh, he, he even got term limits for leaders. He's got uh, workers' comp changes. He's got bills dealing with uh, his um, uh, property tax freeze, pension reform. He's, he's got that. And uh, a negotiated revenue bill with Senator Rodonio supports every one of those today. So he's the leader of his party. He's the one that put... $50 million in dollars into his fund as a down payment, you'll have to ask him what the next step is. I'm willing to do anything, go to meetings. and But the main thing is those bills are out there. They're ready to be called. We need Republican support. And he's tweeted a photo of what he wants to see out of this grand bargain. What are the 
other things is a permanent property tax freeze. Is that a non-starter? Yeah. We negotiated a five-year property tax freeze, a two-year permanent, and a three-year by referendum. Does that sound like a compromise? Yes. That's how you pass legislation, not by going back to what he did two years ago, the day he got inaugurated, and giving us his turnaround agenda. The status quo is that we're spending a seven or eight billion dollars more than we have. That's the status quo. It's not like we're not overspending. We are overspending right now because we have court orders. We have continuing appropriations. And he's the one that signed the appropriation for education when all of his Republicans then voted no. So he doesn't want to shut down the schools, doesn't want to shut down the state government, doesn't want to compromise. And as a result, we're, we're as I said in an earlier speech, we owe $12 billion. On election day, two years from now, we'll owe $24 billion. In this package, we have a billion dollars, $100 million. That's in, the, that's in the package implicitly because we raise revenues a certain amount so that we can pay off $7 billion worth of borrowing. That's one of those standalone bills, a $7 billion borrowing so we can pay off our bills. That costs $1.1 billion in a year. And you, you have seven years to pay them off. If we don't pass something this year, we probably won't pass something in the fiscal, in the, in the, in the election year, that we will owe $24 billion. If we're two years behind in paying our bills right now, we would be four years behind, presumably. So this, this has got to end, and that's what we've been saying. Senator Verdonia and I have worked together. I respect her to this day. She's the one that's stood firm. It was her idea initially to, to do this, to show that we can come up with a compromise. The compromise is there. The governor's got to realize that this is as good as it's going to get. It, can we make some minor changes? Of course we can. We've been doing that for a month with Senate Republicans. But uh, he's got to grow up and get this solved. He's the governor. Do you think the governor actually wants a resolution to the budget? I don't know. I haven't talked to him. Um, I do. I, I think we got elected to balance the budget. That's what, uh, uh, that's what our number one goal is. He wanted to attach reforms to that obvious responsibility of passing the budget. We have attached the reforms. He says they're not enough. Okay, what's your alternative? Two more years, no money, a junk bond status might come just as a result of us not calling this bill today. So uh, I don't know what else to say to him. I mean, he's, he's got to figure this out. I think he's got maybe some bad advisors. Maybe that's part of the problem. Well, you're obviously your question should be directed to those Republican senators, and I would urge you to do so. I mean, you've got roll calls you can look at. There's only 22 of them. I have a lot more people to talk to. So you can talk to those 22 and ask them what, what they were thinking. I talked to a couple. They said they're, they're just trying to drive a harder bargain. Yeah, okay. It, but does, does there come a point where... Well, you know what? I believe that, that they understand that at this point in time, it's hard to say Illinois is not competitive because of our workers' comp laws and we're losing jobs and all that because of our workers' comp laws, when in fact the reason why we might be hurting is because we don't have a budget, because we've been downgraded. The image of the state as the, uh, uh, one of the worst run in the state, there's the only one that doesn't have a budget, that's what's hurting the jobs climate and the business climate. So I think that he's got to figure that out. I think maybe that many of the Senate Republicans have, and I think that it's not the Senate Republicans who want to drive a hard bargain. I think it's the governor told him that that's what he wants. What, what changed from a few weeks ago when he was heaping praise on the Senate grant bargain, cut an yeah. ad uh, claiming yeah. ownership of the grant yeah. bargain, and then well, today is working against 
Well, he's, he's willing to compromise as long as he gets 100% of what he wants, apparently. So that's not how it works. He's never been a governor before and never been in government. And people have to press buttons. People have to vote. Believe me, it's hard for me to go around and work roll calls. You see me doing it. I got as many votes as I can on all these packages, which some of my members are really upset that I even call on these bills. That's what, that's what it is. That's what you do. And he apparently doesn't have people around him that he's listening to that understand how that works. So it now has got to the point where the lack of a budget itself is what's really the problem that has to be solved. And he should be lucky he's getting any of these reforms because what we really need to do is get a budget. And that includes some revenue. And believe me, the, when, you're, when you structure revenue, you implicitly have to figure out, well, do we have enough money to pay for our bills? And so, even though we're not doing the budget for next year now, we're raising revenue in anticipation of that budget. And we would be saving billions of dollars by doing this grand bargain from what we're actually spending. So we're not cutting anything by not passing a bill. And that's a fundamental uh, thing that he has to understand. We are obligating ourselves to expenses way in excess of the revenues we have in, and that's costing us more revenue to pay off the borrowing we inevitably would have to do to pay those bills. It's that simple. So they don't have the leverage, if that's the way to answer your question, that they think they have. And that's been the problem. But it can't be. That's really the important point. This is, there's no such thing as standing pat here. We're spending 7 or $8 billion more than we have coming in. And the grand bargain actually ends up in, in us spending less than that because we're not incurring further debt that has to be paid off. Yes, ma'am. No, see, I, I never talked to him. I don't negotiate. I haven't negotiated with him. I've been negotiating with Senator Redonio. And then we get these new requests all the time that presumably are coming from the governor. And then finally, we have no votes except for Redonio's. And if he's not willing to make that next move that you mentioned, do you know what the, next, the Senate's next step will be? Well, I have a package of bills out there, some of which have passed. The rest can be called whenever I'm told by the Republicans that they're ready to vote for it. The governor has repeatedly said that his demands are, it's about short-term pain now for long-term yeah. gains. What do you make of that? Maybe the first month or six months of his administration, he could say short-term pain. Now it's been two years of pain and $12 billion in debt and $24 billion if we don't do anything. And, it, and the actual... Uh, destruction, potential destruction of the state's economy has already started to occur because we don't have a budget. So that's what I would say to him. And so here we are giving you an opportunity to claim, of course, that you have very substantive reforms, substantive enough that the trial lawyers and the unions are certainly against it. What else does he want? What other proof does he want? They're doing robocalls telling people to vote against the bills, the unions. So what does he want us to do? I mean, this is a very fair compromise. The uh, very modest uh, taxes, unfortunately, uh, it, it's, it's sorry we have to do any taxes, but because of the delay for two years, it's, they had to be higher than they otherwise would have been. So it all argues for the fact that we should get this done as soon as possible, and I'm still willing to do that. Senator Redonio has not been left out to dry. She's the one that's standing tall. She's the one that's willing to compromise. She's been compromising. She's willing to vote for all these bills. The governor is the governor of the state, and the state is in big trouble, and he's in charge. Speaking of that union opposition, um, if Republicans get back on board, how sure are you of your own caucus that you're going to have the votes on Well, I've been spending a lot of time working with my caucus. We've had some votes that are contested. You saw how many votes I was able to get. Uh, there's different parts of the state. There's different backgrounds. There's different uh, p 
people have different terms of office. All that comes into play. I know how to pass bills. I've passed more bills than I sponsored more bills than any other legislator, to my knowledge, in the history of the state. So I know how to work a bill and pass a bill. And we were ready to pass all the bills if we had our Republican partners on board. Hey, guys. I'm tired. <laughs> One more question. No, no. When we were working this morning on some some modifications to this request for um, uh, this, uh, what was then a request for a five-year property tax freeze, which is untenable for poor school districts. So we we uh, we were negotiating that, and we came up with a compromise. So that's what that was that was, that stopped, and she said that there's no votes except for hers. Okay, thank you, guys.